So, Basil, well, just uh, the far set, you said you, you retired from that. You know, mm. It was a, a very ugly race for many reasons. Oh, yes. Uh, loss of life and uh, Australia won the Admirals Cup that time, but uh, there was a lot of sadness associated with the whole event. But, um, and you retired back to Plymouth, is that right? Yes, we yeah. retired back to Plymouth. Yeah. And um, so we arrived back in Plymouth more or less three or four hours after the leading Admirals Cup boats came in. And we tied up next to the Hong Kong boat, Unimara 4, I think the name was. And um, we were chatting and having a, having a, it was early morning, but we were having a, a bit of a drink. And uh, the chaps were on board his boat. And they were all laughing because he just rang up and informed his wife that he was still alive. <laughs> and the, the obituary in the South, morning, South China Morning Post was not correct. <laughs> yeah. well, Whether it was good news or bad, yeah, bad news. news for his wife, who knows? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so you're obviously still in England, but then um, didn't you sail back? Um, your son was very young then and you sailed back to Australia? Yes, we sailed back, yeah. Through uh, uh, through the Panama or the Suez, which way did you come? Through through Panama, right? Yeah. Oh, so you crossed the Atlantic, yeah, yeah with yeah. a baby. Oh yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> well, we'd sailed already from Singapore with the baby, so um, up into the Med. Yeah, mm, right. on Saraban, and um, uh, in fact, as a baby, he d he did a lot of mileage, but uh, no, as a grown up, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, just talk about Panama and the sewers. I mean, you've, you've traversed them a number of times. Yes. Uh, is it easy, hard, interesting, difficult? All of the above, uh, I suppose. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all... Well, anything in Egypt is, an, is by negotiation, you know. <laughs> <laughs> in Panama, you just wait for your turn and, and, and pay the fees, and it's all very organised. But um, the, the, um, the first time we went through the Red Sea was not long after... The, the, there'd been a war with Israel and Egypt and there were a lot of sunken ships in and around the lakes and so on that hadn't been salvaged at that point. In fact, I, I think when we went through, we were like the f f maybe the 12th boat to go through the Suez Canal after it had reopened because it had been shut for a few years. Yeah. 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 And in fact, we ran into an old Sydney boat, which was one of the big ones in those days, Archina which you would remember, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in, in Egypt somewhere there. But um, as regards the Panama Canal, the Panama Canal is always, it's, it's a great, it's a boy's day out. Is it? The, oh, yeah. it's terrific, yeah. And how long does it take to traverse the canal, the Panama Canal? Um, in small yachts like these, they usually do it over two days right. and, you, and you, you anchor somewhere uh, for the night. The last time we went to it was quite funny because we, we had a couple of uh, Navy guys from the US Navy. There were, there were two black guys and they came on board. They were very pleasant fellas and we, 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 we stopped in the lake for the night. So they spent the night with us. And uh, I, I said to them, as we go through the lakes, when, when the line handlers throw you the heaving lines, just bowling on. Uh, the heavy line, and, and they'll take it up. And uh, th they said, uh, what is a bowling, <laughs> <laughs> sir? <laughs> and uh, it turned out that uh, they, they were electronic guys on warships right. and uh, knew nothing about these things. <laughs> and in fact, when we anchored in the lake, we had a quick swim because it was steaming hot. It was one of those swims you dive in and get straight out. Yeah, so of, cold. Yeah, or well, crocodiles, you know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they didn't know how to swim either. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, dear. Yeah. But um, and, and then you, you got back to Australia and um, you did a Hobart race, uh, I think, with Joe Goddard on Inch by Winch. Yes. Yeah. 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 Another character. Yeah. He, well, they were nicknamed the... What, Joe Goddard and the schoolboy crew. I was hardly a schoolboy, but Peter Frankie yeah. w w was a schoolboy at the yeah. time, and young Joe and Peter. Yeah. Yeah. They were great fun. Yeah. And then, but didn't you move into a dental practice in Martin Place? Yes, I did. Yeah. yeah, for a few years. Yeah. yeah, but it was not a lot of fun because I'd worked in practices in London where there'd been uh, four or five dentists and half, well, probably a dozen different girls, you know, running the place, and a single-handed 
business wasn't wasn't my style. I got lonely. Right. And so we sold that after a few years, and we built a boat up in Asia. Uh, Is that in Taipei? Or Taiwan? Yeah, yeah, in Taipei, mm -hmm. and uh, picked it up. And uh, what I took you up there? What? Why up there? Why did? How did oh, you find I'd that seen boat? I'd seen these two boats come into Panama when we were just after the, we'd run the canal, and um, they looked like nice cruising boats, you know, with with a family on board, and um, so we did it you know, like a 10 day trip up to Taiwan and found out the boatyard and asked those guys and found out the boatyard and went there and ordered a boat and then um, came back here and worked for the year while it, until our turn was come, it was built. And then uh, Peter Frankie joined me up in, um, in Taipei. We had a great time for a month uh, watching them finish the boat and we launched it and uh, we sailed off to Singapore. It was a northeast monsoon, which is like very, very rainy and quite windy. And uh, we did not have, still at that time, any satellite navigation on board. It was sextant and so on, but I was pretty familiar with that. But the run out of Taipei was just rain, monsoonal rain the whole time. So we ran for three or four hundred miles without any sights. And actually, we clipped a reef on about the fourth night out of Taiwan. And uh, miraculously, we got off. You know, it was a brand new boat, yeah. and in the back of my mind, I was just—I'd uh, left the check for the insurance of the boat on my friend's coffee table in in Hong Kong, and uh, I said to Pete, I, "I hope the the, the armor, the housekeeper, she posted that letter to to Pantanius <laughs> in, case, in case we don't get off the thing." But but Peter was outstanding, and he got up in the pulpit and w with the use of the spreader lights, which were quite new and bright. It, 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 we found a way through the coral heads and out, and suddenly the, 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 the depth went, you know, like five meters, 15, 20, 50, and we were out in the ocean. Yeah. And Another CYC member was on board there too, Bill Miro. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, he, he's, he, he, he was very good to have one, very good. And, it, and, you, and you took that boat again through the sewers? Into yes, the we went yeah. through the sewers of that one. Yeah. And we took it to the. Um, <coughs> Caribbean and we were there for a while and then when I was in Caribbean I was offered a job in Saudi Arabia in, in a dentistry thing and my son was getting to the schooling a bit more important schooling type and um, so we accepted that for a year and went there and uh, after that was over we went up to England and worked for a while and then that's where we bought, bought the first swan in the, on the Hamble it was a Swan 411. So you'd sailed the boat in the Caribbean, the, the boat that was built in Yeah, we, left, we sailed it up to America and left it there for oh, sale okay. in Annapolis. And they had shipped those boats, all of those boats, to the States, you know, to sell. And they were quite popular. So it, it, fortunately, it sold very, very quickly. And uh, we bought a flat in London for a, a year or two. And then we got the, the, the first Swan. And that was a Swan 41. Yes, yeah, we yeah. took to the sea again. Yeah. But we didn't bring that boat back to Australia. We, we, we took it to the Caribbean. We had it in the Med in the Caribbean and to and fro and eventually sold it back in England and it's now up in Norway. Yeah. Right. And then another Swan, a Swan 44 after that. Yeah. yeah. Um, that we, bought, we bought that Swan 44 in Porto Cervo. We found it down there. And um, it was owned by a German doctor, a lovely man, and he'd had it from you. And um, then we, I think we sold our flat in London and jumped on that boat for, for a couple of years. And we brought that boat back here and sold it four or five years ago. And, and how did you get that boat, boat back? We sailed it back again through, through uh, Panama right. and across the Pacific. That was the, that was the third trip across the Pacific, you know. Right. And, then, and then the recent boat was the four times across the Pacific. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But the, you, um, the 44, uh, you spent some time at Ely Beach with that, did you? Or did you yes. rest up there? Yes, we yeah. took it up to Ely Beach yeah. uh, after we got back to Australia. And we did the Hamilton Island and the, the Ely Beach regattas and things up there. It was good yeah. fun. Yeah. And you managed to fit in a few Hobart races in between, didn't you? Yeah, all this? Not a lot of Hobarts. I think I've done about four Hobart races, uh, Mike Clements on Rager, yeah. 
and the Enid one and uh, inch by winch and uh, then it was one or two on inch by winch. Uh, oh, and with Natel? Rolf on, on Natel, Natel too. Natel too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Natel yeah. Leek. I saw her in Hobart, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And I know um, you've, you've and the, the, the final boat which you've got here at the CYC, well down on the mooring, just yes. off the marinas here, but mm. you've, you've really got a love affair with the Caribbean, haven't you? you, you love oh, it I there. love the Caribbean, yeah. it's really good. It's great for sailing, and the regattas are unbelievable, you know? yeah. and the music. Because <laughs> yeah. I noticed, though, we have a great sailing here, but... It's very clinical, whereas in the Caribbean you've got the same enthusiasm, but you've got music pumping out and... Uh, <laughs> a bit of rum. An outrageous <laughs> apres. Uh, <laughs> so what's the favourite part of the Caribbean? What, what's, what part do you I, like? I like Antigua very much. Yeah. And um, I, I worked there as a dentist, so I've not, you know, made friends and sort of some real attachments there. And uh, we've done the, the race week many times. But St. Martin is a good island too. We've got good friends up there. And uh, we always used to go to St. Martin to do rigging and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. And you've a lot got, of Aussies in St. Martin. And you've yeah. got the Swan 48 now. She's a yeah. Freer's design. Yes. Yeah. 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 And you've, uh, you've been racing the Winter Series before yes. it got sadly yeah. cancelled. Yeah. You're doing okay there, I see. Oh, we, yeah. we did all right in the beginning and the winds were a little bit light in the yeah. subsequent races. Yeah. We got a first and a second in, in the early stages, but nothing spectacular after that. So what's the future hold? <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, I don't think anyone knows, do no, I? At this stage, yeah. no. get part, get part, what does Trump call it? The China virus. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, are we off again? Oh, you, you bought this swan in, in Newport, Rhode Island, is that yes, right? Yes, yeah. Shane went over and found it. And uh, we had a very good Aussie friend who worked in, uh, lives and works in, in Jamestown, opposite Newport. Yep. So he went and had a quick look at it. And he said it's only been used for Sunday picnics. It was in really good condition. And um, so Shane went over and had a good luck, got it surveyed and, you know, went through the sale. And then with Angela and his brother, you know, we went over there and had a little bit of time on it. And then Shane eventually, in the November, took it down to St. Martin. And then the, the three of us all flew in from Australia to St. Martin. And then we had that winter there. And that was the beginning of that. Right. That boat, which is now here, and you brought that back again through the Panama. Mm, yes, yeah. yeah, but um, a few times through the Panama, and we took her from the Caribbean back to Europe. Um, when there were thirteen Atlantic crossings, so you've done thirteen there. Atlantic crossings. Yes, that's right. Yeah, wow. and so, bad weather. I mean, what's fastnet aside? I mean, some in the Atlantic crossings, you've had bad weather. Good only weather crossing or? the North Atlantic back to Europe. From, from North America, you know, because then you start to go north. I mean, yeah. you go north looking for wind, yeah. you know, and, and you get it, you know, but then you make fast crossings. Yeah. But um, crossing from the Caribbean back to Europe is, is, is uh, it's reasonable, you know. Yeah. And the, and the trips out to the Caribbean from Europe are usually pretty nice because they're in the, in, in the December, in the trade winds. Yeah. Mm. So, Basil, um, well, move on to racing. I mean, what do you you see these boats today? You know, canning keels and foils, and what do you make of all that? Oh, I love them. Yeah. <laughs> They're good. I'm just looking forward to the start of the Vendée. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. They're, they're weapons, yeah. aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. Weapons. something else. Yeah. 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 Um, they're going to go around so quickly. Yeah. 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 Well, that, that's that's right. As long as they hold hold together. Of course. Yes. Yeah. But the materials are amazing nowadays, aren't they? Yeah. 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 The boats are quite spectacularly different yeah, yeah, yeah that new hugo boss and yeah, yeah I, that one uh, yeah it's alex thompson yeah, yeah 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 but i guess you've made some wonderful friends with all your cruising and, and racing around the world oh, i think so yeah, yeah it's about the people you meet isn't it yeah exactly it's uh i to, to me i mean the sailing is i mean it's more the the voyages and the destinations all places you know the, yeah. good but the people you meet are wonderful you know yeah the characters and even even the, even the corrupt dodgy ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give you a question without notice. If you if you had to end up in one place around the world with your Swan Forty Eight now, where would it be? Oh, it'd be in Antigua for sure. Would it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right. Yeah, that's a good place. Yeah. But it, but those people who live in places like Antigua, um, you know, to be fair, we're always there in the good time of year. 
you know, the winter when it's all sailing and the, the summers, you know, in, An in Antigua after race week, which is usually the last week of April, by the 5th of May, the harbours are empty. Yeah. You know, they've all gone back to Europe or North America. And you haven't so, done any cruising up Scandinavia at all? Up I, I was up in Scandinavia just two years ago with another oh, that's right. swan yeah. Yeah. Uh, called Yellow Drama, the Swan 57. It was owned by a friend of mine who I've sailed with for, uh, for donkey's years at different times. And we did a trip from uh, Livington up to Helsinki. And that was, that was really very, very nice. Good cruising up there, or was it? Yeah, because we were in the Baltic in, in the south of Finland in July. It was warm as. Oh. And um, beautiful islands off the... Off the yeah, archipelagos up there. Yeah, archipelagos, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The boat actually, Shane and I left the boat in the Helsinki. I think we came home here. But they continued on up to a lake in the, in, in the east of Finland. They had to actually go through Russia to get to the lake, you know, some canal system and river and whatnot. But um, we couldn't stay that long, which is very unfortunate. Right. We did visit the Swan Factory, which was quite good fun. Yeah. yeah. And what about dentistry? You, you're still doing a bit of locum work? Yeah, I do locum work. Yeah. 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 Up, usually in country towns or in the wilderness of Western Australia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where they won't let you go anymore. <laughs> but I mean, you know, the CYC has been your sort of second or third home, I guess, for a long time. Yeah. How do you, the club's pretty nice now. Oh, isn't I think it? this yeah. is a lovely club. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so many yacht clubs in the world who are, um, you know, in Spanish, you know, the beautiful yacht clubs in Spain, but they're sort of. Uh, sort of 70% social and 30% sailing, but this is like 100% yeah. sailing club. Yeah. yeah, really nice. So yeah. I think in summary, we could fairly say that you've, you've crossed the Pacific a number of times. How many? Yeah, four, four or five, times. Four times. Yeah. yeah. The, the Atlantic, 13, 13 times. times. Yeah. You've done five Sydney Hobart races yeah. and you have a remarkable number of miles, you know, across the Tasman and back across the, through the Panama, through the Suez. I, I think, and thinking about when I was, uh, going to interview you today, I would think it'd be f hard to find any member that's done more miles under sail from this club. I, I think it'd be very hard to find. I mean, when you add all that up, it's an incredible, that, yeah. it's an incredible yeah. number. It was two trips around the world there yeah. with all those crossings. Yeah. Um, so it's not a bad yeah, record. Yeah. Well, you'd, no, I, you'd be in the top three. I don't know who the other two would be, but yeah, Vic you know, Meyer did a lot well, of mileage. Vic did, but yeah. you know, he didn't. Yeah, he, he was very inspirational, and he was very nice to me as a young person. I never sailed with Vic because you know he always had his yeah t team, <laughs> team of heavyweights. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, he, he was very nice and encouraging. Yeah. And he was a bit inspirational. Yeah. You know, well, Jack and, Earl, he of course. Jack Earl, yeah, miles, I knew Jack well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But I would Morris. think I think you'd you'd be on the dais there. You'll get a medal, I think, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. So Basil, posthumously, thank you. <laughs> no, well, no, not yet. You've got a long way to go yet. But so a couple of records: the longest period to become a dentist. I think that's a pretty good record to have. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. very proud of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, a lot of lot of miles. So look, continue to sail safely. It's been wonderful to Thanks, Pete. to talk. Uh, yeah. We've known each other a long while. Uh, absolutely, and yeah. uh, it's been terrific. Yeah. So continue to go well and. Uh, Good luck. We've still got to do a, f a trip to the fish market together. That's right. A yeah. voyage to the fish market. That's right. Before we'll, they pull it down. We'll do that for sure. <laughs> but anyway, good luck and thanks very much, Basil. Thank you, Peter. It's been a pleasure.